just a reminder for everybody. I'm hoping you know you take advantage if you're in this spot. Is I'm going to have a construction or two on the unit test, and when you're studying, and I'm not there to do, help you step by step. Remember, the step by step instructions are up on Classroom. If you go under Classwork, it says Construction Help, and you pick whatever video you need. Take a look real quick. Here are all the videos of all the constructions we do during the course of a year. Here's perpendicular, which we're going to do today. And then here's uh, parallel lines, which we're about to do right now. You, I understand it's hard to remember all the steps, but you can go at your own pace by watching these videos. All right. Uh, so first, let's talk about how do I construct using my compass and straight edge a parallel line. So this one's got to be parallel to line M, but it's got to go through P, your parallel line. So something we're looking, a nice other horizontal line. Uh, I got good news for you, or maybe good news. This is a construction we've already done. We just definitely need to review it. So you might want to just make a quick note. All we're going to do here is copy an angle. That's what this construction boils down to is just copying an angle. And go ahead, look at your paper. There's no angle to copy yet. All right. First step, you're going to take your straight edge. All right. You don't need your compass for this one. You're going to take your straight edge and make a transversal through P and line M, a transversal. Remember, that's a line. Hey, I don't need this. That's not going to help me. I need a full-on transversal, a line going through point P and line M. All right? And I don't care what angle it goes at. That's ridiculous. Okay, so everyone's got that. Now let's go back to this copy and an angle business. So what I'm about to do with you guys, on my diagram anyway, I'm going to take this angle I made right here, this angle right here, and I'm going to copy it onto, everyone see the ray that starts with endpoint P? All right, so I'm going to take this angle and copy it onto that ray. And we have done this before, so let's review. First step. I'm going to put my compass point on the vertex of the angle I'm about to copy. And before I make any arc marks, I've, this is the fourth time I've done this today. And I'm starting to understand why some of you guys have issues with constructions. You make your arc marks way too wide. All right. Like I'm getting these. You know, I'm going around and students are doing that, which is fine. But then at the end of your construction, you're like, what should have intersected where? And you don't know what should intersect each other because these things are so darn wide. So try to start getting in the habit today, at least, of just making some narrow, smaller arc marks, all right? That's all I need. That's all I need. I don't need anything huge. Close those suckers down. Don't open them all the way up. Okay, everyone's got that arc through the angle they're copying. Now go up to the ray. We're doing all our construction on. Go up to the ray, put your compass point on endpoint P, and on the same side, all right, on the same side that you just made that first arc, make this next one that goes through the ray. Again, if you're if these two are intersecting, you're making them too big, everybody. All right, if these two arcs are intersecting, we're making it too big and it's already confusing. All right, go to back down to your first arc. Please remember, the reason why we make our first arc most times is to establish two points of intersection, okay? Open up your compass to those two points now, okay? That's any construction we do, the first arc we always make is to probably to make two points of intersection. So open up your compass to those two points for me. Head back to your ray, but instead of starting at point P, we're going to start at where the arc intersected the ray. Okay, so watch how my compass goes up to where that arc intersected. And you're going to make these two intersect each other on, on the same side of the transversal. 
Okay, don't go on the alternate side. Stay on the same side here. So I'm going to make those intersect. All good. Yep, and now you guys can grab your straight edge and draw in your parallel line. Line up your straight edge with point P and that two arcs intersection. So all this is, is copying an angle after you make your transversal. Uh, I do want to go over this because you're in honors. Why are they parallel? Well, you just gave us steps, so that's why they're parallel. No, 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 no. Why are they parallel? What did we just do to the angle? We copied it, right? Which makes the two angles what up here? They're congruent, right? Everyone agrees. They're congruent because I just copied this one. So they're congruent. Now let's go to this unit. What do I call these angles? Okay, so put the two together. They're congruent and they're corresponding. What's that usually imply? I have? Darn right. Let's go. Parallel lines. All right. Questions? Comments? Any concerns? We're going to do this on your own. Okay. And we're not going to do this one as a group. We're going to do this one on our own. I know. How many of you are freaking out right now because it's a vertical line? Turn your paper if you're having issues and want a horizontal line. Oh, that makes sense. I wish I had thought of that. All right, go ahead, draw your transversal in and copy an angle up on your right. If you get stuck, let me know. Try to make these small arcs. Don't make these huge ones and you have intersections all over the place. I'll come around, take a peek. All right, a little more detail now. Construct a, well, there's a new vocabulary. Well, not to you or I probably, but to this year anyway. Quadrilateral. What's a quadrilateral? Four-sided figure. So I need a four-sided figure with one pair of parallel sides that are the length of A and B. So real quickly, let me do a sketch up on the board so you can see what we're looking at. So this is going to be a quadrilateral. Some, I don't know what it's going to look like. Maybe something like that where they're parallel and those parallel sides are A and B. So that's what I need at the end of this. Now, it, it might not look like this, all right? But two sides need to be parallel, and those parallel sides need to have a length of A and B. I don't care about this right now. Not even going to sniff it. Here's what I care about right now. I need some parallel lines, all right? So I can put A and B on. I've given you a point. I've given you a line. Let's do it. Give me a pair of parallel lines first. Don't worry about the line segments. All right, real quick, what was my first step again? Draw your transversal in. Copy one of the angles up on the right.
Again, just give me a parallel line. I'm not worried about the segments yet. I need parallel lines so I can put the segments on them. Ready to build the quadrilateral. Four sides again, right? Four sides. Uh, I already have one side I'm going to use up there. Right, because A and B have to go on the parallel lines. Anybody see the one side I'm going to pick? That's my one out of four sides. The part of the transversal between the parallel. So here's going to be my first side right there. There's one side one of my quadrilateral. That's going to be side one. What's got to go on the parallel lines? A and B, right? So now you got to make a decision. I'm not going to make it for you. You make it. I can either build this quadrilateral to the right of the transversal or to the left. Either one's going to be fine, right? Here's side one that I've already highlighted. So I'm going to go up to segment A, measure it, and copy it onto one of the parallel lines, either to the right or to the left of my transversal. So I'm going to take A, and again, you want to do it on top, do it at the bottom, I don't care. Copy it to the right or to the left. So here's A, for, or me. I'm sorry, what did I just measure there, A or B? A. So there's segment A. And now I'm going to do segment B and just make sure I do it on the same side of the transversal as I did A. There's B. There's B. So I have A, B, there's three sides, and then side four is going to be when I connect A and B. There it is, quadrilateral, a pair of sides parallel that are A and B. Anybody know what I call this figure, by the way? Quadrilateral that's got one pair of parallel sides. Okay. Trapezoid. It's trapezoid we just constructed. Yep. Fancy name for a trapezoid. Don't worry, we have a huge unit right before the midterm dedicated to quadrilaterals. So any questions from you guys? We feel kind of confident with parallel lines because I'm going to fly through the perpendicular because we've done them already. Hey, perpendicular, you want it? Here we go. Perpendicular. Uh, quickly, vocab check. So this line is going to form what with line M? Right angles. Perfect. But it's got to go through P. So remember, I'm not going to do the old fish one where I open up my compass more than half the length, right? Because that may not go through P. All right. So first thing we're going to do, put our compass point on P. And like we've done for most of our constructions, our first arc will establish two points of intersection on the line. Okay, so open up your compass to whatever opening you need it. And make sure you got two points of intersection. That's always our first, the job of the first arc is always to get two points of intersection. And then why do I need two points? Because your last two arcs are going to be made from those two points. All right, 
just a real heads, quick heads up, after I make that initial arc, I always like to open up my compass a little bit wider. And the reason why, because you don't want this at the end. And then you're like, where the heck do I line up everything? All right, that may happen if you keep your compass the same opening the entire time. All right, so open it up a little wider. Go to each point of intersection. That's why we found them. And you can do this above or below the line now. Two arcs that intersect each other above or below the line. Again, you don't need huge arcs, everybody. You don't need huge. You're just trying to get them to intersect. Okay, questions, comments? And then the last one I have now, point, everyone notice on this one, point P is not on the line. What happens if the point I need to draw it through is on the line? And my answer, absolutely nothing. It is the same construction, okay? I'm gonna put my compass point on P again. It just happens to be on the line. My first arc is gonna create two points of intersection on line M. So you decide if you want to go frown, smile, your call. Establish those two points of intersection on that first arc. Open up your compass a little wider. Then go to those two points and make two more arcs that intersect each other. You do not care about any intersection of the first arc. There we go. 